there is a dark uh, cloud approaching over us, um, brought by the immense uh, environmental pressures that we are causing to, uh, to our planet. So, but solutions might uh, be around the corner, and one of them is the circular economy, uh, a system where uh, waste is minimized to the maximum extent throughout the whole supply chain. And this is achieved not only by reduced, uh, reducing, reusing, and recycling, but also by uh, uh, durable design, uh, um, repairing, and uh, refurbishing. Um, so uh, our first question was, uh, where does our organization, Eurochamber, stand on the issue? And uh, we understood that uh, to back future policy recommendations or any actions we needed, some kind of comprehensive study on the topic and then a wide internal debate um, to back up our uh, future activities. Um, so uh, Valerio here, my uh, colleague, spent uh, quite a few weeks on uh, screening uh, a lot of studies and uh, analysis and reports that were already out there to see what was useful because we explicitly wanted only uh, uh, quantitatively well-grounded data in order to come up with a, a sort of cost-benefit analysis. And uh, well, in the end, we did it. So after a few months of intense work, uh, we had a relatively comprehensive uh, quantitative analysis of uh, nine industrial sectors in Europe, uh, cited with uh, nine uh, case studies that, uh, that were based on interviews with uh, companies. And we shared that with more than 15 other organizations to have a wide uh, debate. So what are the sectors? Well, uh, automotive and mobility, as you can see, textiles, but also agriculture, uh, construction, plastics, uh, electronics, and uh, electric equipment, but also uh, food and beverage, uh, metal manufacturing, and uh, the gastronomy and the hotel sector, and only where we had quantifiable data available. Um, uh, so as you can see, it was uh, not only uh, big companies such as Arubis, which is one of the biggest uh, copper producers in Europe, or in the world actually, but also very small and innovative ones such as uh, IM Echo, that's uh, a circular computer produced in Ireland, or XYT, uh, uh, a mobility company. So we looked at uh, the fashion industry, which uh, as you can see, uh, it's still a very linear, like runs still on a very linear model. Uh, in fact, only 1% of the garments nowadays are uh, in a cycle loop, and uh, over 70% are landfilled and uh, incinerated. So we identified three main solutions. The first one is upcycling and recycling of fibers. Uh, development of uh, new types and sustainable types of uh, fibers, such as algae, mushrooms, or hemp. Um, and the third is uh, disrupting the by use throw model uh, by, for example, leasing or uh, the, the second hand market. So we uh, uh, interviewed the Recover, which is a company based in Spain, which uh, makes uh, yarns out of recycled materials. And they suggested us that the pricing model of yarns currently is not adapted to uh, the circular economy. And um, uh, we also looked at the construction sector, which in the EU would uh, become circular only if we develop modular buildings from uh, renewable and recyclable materials, and uh, if we create uh, proper waste recovery plants for, uh, of course, the products coming from out of this, this assembly. So uh, we uh, interviewed, in this case, BMP Paribas, which is uh, actually constructing a building uh, right across uh, the uh, Gare Centrale. And uh, their, uh, the building is circular, of course, and uh, it's supposed to become the new cluster for all Brussels uh, employees. And uh, we came up with three main conclusions out of the interviews. And, uh, well, the first one is this, disassembling old building is oftentimes a very difficult task. Uh, using recycled materials from demolished buildings uh, represents a huge business opportunity. However, the recycling industry is still too fragmented for an effect loop of uh, materials. So for the, instead, for the automotive industry, uh, we are, um, well, ownership will have to uh, give way to uh, shared, uh, shared and electric vehicles. Uh, and uh, Lego cars made of uh, easily replaceable and repairable parts will introduce the concept of uh, modularity. On the other hand, uh, we see uh, durability and uh, high value materials uh, becoming part of the solution. Uh, but uh, however, we, we need some, something like uh, 35 billion uh, euros investment uh, in the next 15 years to uh, achieve uh, this goal. 
Um, maybe you can start uh, <laughs> from the next. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, you're ready. For ready, okay, well, you're too fast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, you're being nervous here. Well, I only start with the next slide. So step number two in the whole process was uh, to meet experts and other stakeholders. Uh, that means other organizations, uh, um, such as sectorial organizations uh, in the sector that, that we've interviewed, uh, and business organizations, but also from the financial sector and think tanks. Um, in order to generate the knowledge that we need to elaborate our own recommendations. Um, uh, well, you might be thinking, what are the recommendations? Um, well, we finished the report now, so we are in the iteration process of elaboration of these, uh, uh, of these recommendations. But there are some preliminary results that often came up during the interviews. For example, the access to finance for uh, small and medium-sized companies, but also the potential, but also potential dangers of, of digitalization. The next step is, of course, communication. So next uh, week on the 5th of February, we have an event at the EU Industry Days where we're going to present the report and have uh, two innovative companies uh, uh, on the stage to talk about their B2B solutions in circular economy um, and one project of a chamber of commerce in, in France. And uh, finally, it's also about using the whole network of regional and local chambers of commerce within Europe uh, to develop new services for their members, which are mainly small and medium-sized companies. Uh, with regards to the circular economy. That could be, for example, in e-tracking of materials um, or the like. Thank you very much. Thank you.